Hey yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Scatino, aka Scar, and welcome to my first impressions video on Far Cry 3 on the PlayStation 3. So I've been playing it for, well I've put in about two hours of it, so literally is my, <coughs> pardon me, so it literally is my first impressions, you know, I've probably not even scratched the surface of what this game has to offer. Um, so first of all, in terms of like the story, I've not really got that much into it. I've done like a couple of like pretty, pretty small missions. Um, you know, the game actually starts off. Um, you know, you, you've gone away to this tropical to this tropical island. You know, Rook Island, with a group of friends, and then you know you stumble across Vass, um, who's the guy on the front. You know, uh, and you pretty much get locked up in this prisoner camp thing, um, and Vass is like in the middle of like. Um, you know, killing off all your friends, and some of your friends have gone missing, this, that, and the other, and, and you know, so you basically have to escape from the camp, um, and then, like, you pass out or some shit, and you get found on the beach by this guy called Dennis, who's actually one of the good guys, um, and he actually takes you, well, Dennis is actually, like, one of one of the natives of, of the island, you know, um, the island has been took over by Vass, and he's and his army basically, you know, all these pirates, you know, and they control different outposts around around the island, um, you know, and it's full of like drugs and firearms, this, that and the other. So the basic premise of the story is that you need to become this soldier and, you know, reclaim back the island for the natives as well as in the process find your friends um, and hopefully save them. Um, from death. Uh, some of them are already killed, um, but some of them aren't, and some of them are out there that you need to find. So that's pretty much the short and skinny of what I played of the story. Um, now I think one of one of the big you know things people will be wondering about is just how big this world is. You know, does it look as beautiful as what's being shown in preview videos, etc., etc. Well, let me tell you this: the world is huge. The world is huge. Um, the only way, well, to be honest, the the whole world is open to you. You know, you don't have to unlock certain areas of the game. You know, you're not you're not like confined to, to one area of the world until you've done something like until you've done like a specific mission or something like that. And um, what it basically is is scattered around the whole world are these radio towers. And when you discover these radio towers, you need to basically activate them, turn them on. And what that will do, that will actually kind of um, synchronise the map a bit. You know, so think of Assassin's Creed. It will synchronise the map. Um, and what that will do, that will open up new missions for you, new stores, you know. Um, and just different points of interest on the map. So, um, you know, you need to find all of these radio towers in order to get the most out of the world basically now in terms of the graphics to be honest what i'll say is a lot of the previews and everything that you've been seeing is definitely running on pc hardware that is what i'll say i, w I was watching a video last night um that ubisoft actually um you know created it was them showing off like the first i think it was like 25 minutes of gameplay or something like that that um, we actually uploaded now even though some of like the the button icons like you know it will say hold hold this button to do this action even though it was like xbox 360 icons um i i could tell after now playing the game that that video was probably running on pc hardware but with obviously a 360 controller plugged in and you know it all being mapped to a 360 controller and I know that because playing on PlayStation 3, at least, you know, I, I may be completely wrong here. This may just be the PlayStation 3 version. But, you know, in terms of, like, the draw distance and everything, you know, I've played games on PS3 with great draw distances. You know, the Uncharted series, even Skyrim had a great draw distance, you know, and with detail within it as well. Far Cry 3 though, I mean, like, when you climb up to these big radio towers, you know, you can see, you can see, like, a lot of the scope of the island, you know, you can see the mountains in the distance, but some of these mountains, 
are not really in the too far distance, but yet there's, there's absolutely no detail on the mountains whatsoever. It's quite blurry. Um, so you know you get none of the texture detail or anything like that. You don't see like you know it's not like misty mountains with like you know mist coming down the mountains or anything like that. No, no kind of detail on it. Um, you know when I was watching this video last night and I climbed this ridge and on the video they climbed this tower, you could look out at the ocean and the ocean was like sky blue. Whereas when I was playing it today on PS3, you know it was it. It was very much washed out, it didn't look as good, so that's why I'm just saying um, the the videos that you've been seeing, previews, you know, official ones anyway, um, they're probably running on PC hardware, I can pretty much guarantee you that. You know, even, even just the texture on rocks is quite low resolution as well, and um, there is some screen tearing as well, uh, some definite frame rate issues. That I've noticed. I mean, don't get me wrong. Please do not get me wrong. I'm not sat here hating on the game. It's not a bad looking game by any means. I'm just saying that, you know, you need to be wary about these kind of um, demos that are being put out, especially by the developers, because they want to grab your attention. They want you to think uh, just how amazing this game looks. And the thing is, with multi platform games, especially games that come out on PC as well at the same time, they can use the PC hardware to sell the game even on console. I mean, we all know just how amazing Battlefield 3 looked all the way up until its release, and yet all of that was PC footage. All the trailers, all the in-game engine footage that you saw within Battlefield 3, it was all PC footage. None of it was console footage. Because we all know when the console games come out, it looks nothing like PC quality. I mean, but that's a given just because of how you know, high-end PCs are these days. I mean, um, you know, consoles are stuck to how they were built all them years ago. But what I will say is there's so much potential with the open world genre. And I think, you know, you can see what Ubisoft Montreal have tried to do and you can see their ambition. You can see how, you can see the scope of the game that they wanted to create. But unfortunately, they're limited to only what the, the hardware can do at this point, you know, which is why for, for games such as Far Cry and for games such as Skyrim and all these open world sandbox type games, you know, I, I'm hoping that, you know, the next generation of consoles is going to come around sooner rather than later just because, you know, the consoles cannot handle these type of games anymore, you know, uh, especially multi-platform games. I mean, if it was... Running on PlayStation 3, if this was an exclusive, a first party Sony game, exclusive, they can use as much of the Blu-ray disc as humanly possible. I mean, let's not forget, I think it was like Uncharted 2 or Uncharted 3, pretty much pushing the Blu-ray disc to the max in terms of how much data is on there, you know, and it ran great as well. I think if a first party Sony studio could create an exclusive open world game and really take advantage of the hardware, take advantage of the amount of space on that disc, you know, I think you'd have a fantastic game. But obviously when it comes down to to multi platform games, they need to they need to pretty much keep the the quality of the games on par with each other. So th this game may only be about set seven gigs. That that might be as much that is because that's as much as maybe the 360 version is when you install it something like that whereas um a blu-ray disc can hold like 20 plus gigabytes of data so you know it just goes to show how how much they have to shrink them down in order for them to you know be on par pretty much across platforms obviously a pc that's completely different they can you know you've got um different texture packs that you can probably download and everything, um, the install probably a lot more, you know, because you can get the highest resolutions, the highest frame rates that you want, and uh, and it obviously if you've got a monster PC, that shit will be running smooth, as and look amazing. But yeah, so the developers are pretty much limited to the hardware. Uh, but like I say, do not get me wrong, it's still a good looking game. Um, but please don't go into this game thinking this is going to be the greatest looking game you've ever seen because it's not. Um, not in my eyes, I still think the two greatest looking games of this generation 
are Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 3 and to be honest I don't think I've seen anything really that can match that uh, or, or not necessarily matched it but in my own opinion nothing that's as visually appealing to me than Uncharted 2 and 3 um, so in terms of like the missions you know there's been some really like interesting missions so for instance the pirates like operate out of these outposts around the island basically you know they have different outposts around the island and you've basically basically you need to take over these outposts you need to take control and what that basically means is you've just got to go in there you've got to kill them all and 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 that's it you know you kill all these pirates <coughs> You know, people who were part of Vass's army. Um, but the thing is, you know, the game can be quite difficult. I mean, the enemies aren't necessarily easy to take down. Ammo is, re is restricted as well. So, what you've actually got in your arsenal is this camera. And basically, what the camera allows you to do is, is when you sneak into one of these outposts, into a camp, you're able to actually use the camera to actually tag the enemies onto your minimap. So obviously that makes it a lot more easier to, to know uh, where the enemies are on, on, the, on the screen at any one time. Um, and it also allows you to then to plan your strategy. So you can either go in there all guns blazing but then be prepared to get overrun by enemies because these outposts also have an alarm. So if, the, if, if you give the enemy enough time to reach this alarm and they pull it, that will bring a whole lot more enemies to you and then you've got a whole lot more people that you need to try and deal with especially when you've got restricted ammunition as well so you really need to think about your strategy maybe, maybe, you know maybe you could uh, go in there with, with your knife and take a few people out stealthily and then leave maybe the last two or three guys you know you just pop them off with headshots from your pistol or whatever gun you've got so their missions seem quite interesting to me hopefully you know they'll be quite varied as well you know they'll be different ways that you can actually do it. I mean, I already know that there's a bow in the game that's going to be a lot of fun to actually use when I finally get my hands on it. Um, so there's that. You've also got, like, bounty missions as well. Like, within an outpost, like, you, you'll have, like, a bounty board, basically. You know, think of, like, Borderlands, where, you know, you have the bounty board and you can get missions off it. So there, there may be, like, a wanted poster on there and, you know, the, the, somebody's put a prize on a certain person's head so you can accept that mission to do but you'll also get a secondary objective like kill this guy with a knife um, and then you'll get a bigger XP bonus reward so you want to try and do them kind of things as well so and also these hunting missions as well because it is a tropical island you know there is forests there is jungles you know so much vegetation you know um, so there's animals roaming about, you know, up to now I've seen deers, I've seen dogs, I've seen um, boars, I've even seen fucking turtles, like big turtles, you know, not tiny little things like the big tortoise things, like the huge ones, I've even seen them, so you can go, oh, there's bears as well, so you can go on hunting missions, so you're able to hunt down these animals, you're able to actually skin them, and now you can actually um, either sell off the skin for obviously for more cash, or you can actually use a crafting system. Uh, and the cra and using like um, you know animal skins within the crafting system actually allows you to expand your, your backpack because you can only hold so many items within your backpack. But if you craft your your backpack into a certain way, you can expand it so it holds more items for you. Uh, also, you know, you can go around it and you can pick, um, you know, diff different crops, different flowers. And again, you can use a crafting system to craft yourself like syringes, like medicine, in order to heal yourself, things like that. Now, well, one of the nice little touches that I've seen is that, you know, you're not you're not Superman in this game. Uh, you know, you, you definitely are out there trying to survive. And... and and I remember this one part that I was playing earlier on where I jumped off like this ledge. And I must admit it was pretty much of a far drop. And if any normal person, you know, would have done it, you know, you, you would have felt the effects of it. So what actually happened was I jumped off this ledge or off this rock or whatever it was. 
and the guy obviously like landed and then he landed on his hands, did a roll and then got up. And then obviously that takes off some life off you and if you hold the triangle button, we are playing on PlayStation 3, if you hold the triangle button you can actually heal, heal yourself. And it actually showed him put his hands up and you could see how his thumb was really dislocated from the fall. And it, you actually watch him grab, it, grab his thumb and, you know, snap it back into place, basically. And it's little touches like that that I really like, because it really makes you feel like, you know, you, you're not invincible in the game. You are definitely out trying to fight for your own survival. Um, as far as I know, there's no regenerating health. Or if it is, it's really, really so. I think you can you can unlock the the ability to regenerate some of your health if you've only had a certain, you know, a tiny amount took off. Where if you've got a lot of your health took off, then you've got to use healing items. So yeah, that's one of the things that I like. You know, it really does feel like you're out for survival and things like that. So um, yeah, there's also like loads of loot around the PlayStation. You, know, you can loot them. For different items, you know, for cash, there will be um, specific things in there that you can then go and sell, um, you know, for more cash and you can trade them, you know, this, that, and the other. So that's pretty much where I'm up to it at the moment, you know. Now, don't get me wrong, like from earlier on, I was talking about the graphics, please don't get me wrong and think that I'm hating, I'm not. It's not a bad looking game whatsoever, but you know, there are definitely. These technical limitations, let's just say that. It's not a bad looking game, but there's technical limitations on consoles. Uh, I'm, I'm not speaking for 360, I don't know. I'm speaking specifically about PlayStation 3. Um, what I would say is, I probably wouldn't be surprised if when the digital, digital foundry analysis comes out probably um, next week or whenever, you know, Monday maybe, um, I probably won't be surprised to find out that the 360 version probably looks a bit better and probably runs more smoothly than the PlayStation 3 version. I really wouldn't be surprised. It doesn't run that bad, to be honest. You know, there's only some minor hiccups I've come across. You know, just like, you know, minor frame rate issues. You know, it stutters a bit now and then. But nothing major at this point. The game has not yet crashed on me. You know, fingers crossed that it doesn't. No doubt it will. But yeah, I'm expecting the Digital Foundry analysis to be more in favour of the 360 version. And then obviously um, the PC version will blow them both out of the water. Um, so yeah, but you know, up to now, it, it's not a bad game to buy on PlayStation 3. You know, definitely don't let that put you off. I mean, if you've got a choice, you know, if you own both a 360 and a PS3, I'd probably say... Unless you've already got your pre-order and you already know what um, platform you're getting it on and you don't care, then I'd say just, just go for whatever you feel. But if you're on the fence about the game and you want to really want to know which one it runs on, then I'd wait till next week. Go onto Eurogamer.com or Eurogamer.net um, and then click on the Digital Foundry Analysis because no doubt they would have done and they'll tell you which one's the, probably the best system to buy it on. So yeah... What I can say is, um, I am impressed with the game at the moment. I'm very much looking forward to playing more of it. Um, I'm definitely putting up some more gameplay. Now, in terms of the gameplay that I have actually recorded, uh, I have put up, obviously, my unboxing. I've, I'm currently rendering out the first 15 minutes of the game, like the prologue of the game. Then I've got some gameplay of me going towards the first radio tower. So you can get a bit of a sense of the scope of the game. And then in the third video, I've just got me exploring some of Rook Island. There is a second radio tower in that video. And, you know, just me looting some chests and, you know, killing a few enemies. So definitely look out for them. Um, because of how slow my laptop is going at the moment, they won't be up any time soon. Um, because it's taken hours for these videos to render out. And then obviously HD files. I then have to upload them to YouTube and that takes forever as well. So probably expect them um, late tonight, early tomorrow, definitely. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, yeah, and keep checking back for more Far Cry 3 gameplay and impressions. So that's it from me. I'm your boy Scatino and I'm out. Peace.